In this video, I'll show you how to configure Auto Swift in Mixer mode inside Ableton Live. The first step is to select the DAW that we are going to work with. Launch Audio Swift before launching Ableton Live. Go to Preferences and then click the Mixer tab. Audio Swift creates three virtual MIDI ports. In Mixer mode, Audio Swift 1 or Port 1 is used for your primary DAW. Audio Swift 2 or Port 2 is for your secondary DAW in case you work with another one like Pro Tools. Audio Swift 3 is only used with the rest of the controller modes. In this case, we are only working with Ableton Live, so we are going to select it as our primary DAW on port 1. Close the window. The second step is to tell Ableton Live that we want to use Audio Swift as a control surface. Open Ableton Live and go to Preferences, Link MIDI. Over Control Surface, select Mackie Control. On Input, select Audio Swift 1 if Ableton Live is going to be your primary DAW. If it is not, select Audio Swift 2 instead. Assign the output port to be the same as the input. Down over MIDI ports, turn on all Maki control input and output lines. When you finish, close the window. Everything is set up. Now go to Audio Swift and let's open the console window. I'm going to click the star so the window will always be on top. Make sure you're on mixer mode. At the bottom bar, there is a menu where you select the current DAW you want to control. These are the same two DAWs that you set before at the Preferences window, and you can switch between them. The middle area shows the current view you're working on, with a group of parameters you can control with the trackpad. In this case, I am in the first view and I can control the fader plus the solo, mute, and arm record button. To learn the sounds over the trackpad, let's open the trackpad window. In this utility window, we'll see where are our fingers and we can know the size of each sound in our trackpad. With a little practice, moving through the sounds will be easy to you. The left and right areas of the trackpad are for changing between the views and moving from one track to the other by just tapping the trackpad with only one finger. The middle section is where you control the desired parameter and it depends on the view you have chosen. Select the first track in your project. Turn on the console with a four fingers tap. Select view one by tapping the number one. To move the fader of the selected track, use the tip of one finger and slide it up or down inside the fader area. The corresponding fader will move on screen. Notice that the movements are relative, meaning that it doesn't matter if you begin at the bottom of the trackpad or at the top level, the fader will start moving from its last position following your finger direction. Also notice that once you start moving inside the feather zone, you won't need to worry if you accidentally get out of the zone. The selected track will still move. When you finish, press the escape key or double tap the bottom right corner. It's a good practice to turn off the console right away when you finish using the controller, to avoid moving a feather when you really want to move the mouse pointer instead. Let's turn on the console again. If you press the option key in your keyboard when moving the feather, it will reset to its default value of 0 dB. If you keep press the command key, the fader will move more slowly for fine tuning. You can also change the sensitivity of the fader by going to Preferences, Mixer tab, and move this slider horizontally. To solo the track, tap with one finger over the letter S. To mute the track, tap over the M. To arm for record the track, tap over the R. If you need to disable, for example, all the solo buttons on several tracks, keep pressed the Option key and tap the S. Audio Swift lets you control a track that is inside of a bank of eight channels. You can click with the mouse pointer any track inside the bank and Audio Swift will focus on that track. However, in Ableton Live, there's no visual representation of where the bank is on screen. You may click a track without knowing if it is inside the bank or not, and start moving another channel instead. So to make sure you are controlling the right track, with the console on, you can tap over the left and right triangles to jump one track at a time. If you need to do a big jump to another track, tap over the triangles while pressing the control key. It will move to the first track of the next eight channels bank. 
From there, you can tap the triangles again to move one track at a time. Let's see another views. Turn on the console and tap over view number two. You now have access to the feather plus the pen. Move up your finger inside the pen zone and the knob will turn to the right. Move down and it will turn to the left. Keep pressing the option key and move the pen. It will go to the center. Now tap over the number three. View three lets you move two tracks at the same time. I tend to use my index and ring fingers for this. Tap over the left and right triangles and it will jump to the next two tracks. Press the option key and the fader will be set at zero dB. Press the command key for the fine tuning. I have shown you the first three basic views in mixer mode. There are three more. View four is for the sense, view five for the master fader, and view six for the jog wheel. They are all accessible by using a one finger tap over the bottom right area of the trackpad. But before we need to enable them at the preferences window, mixer tap. Here you enable only the views you want to use. I'm going to check them all. Close the window. Turn on the console, tap only once over the bottom right area where the star is, and you'll select the first view you enabled on the preferences window. Tap again and it will switch to the next one. Remember that if you do a quick double tap in this area, instead of changing the view, you'll turn off the console. Let's select the sense view. The console window will show the number of the send you are controlling on the selected track. Move your finger over this zone to set the level of the send. Press the command key for fine tuning. Press the option key while moving and the fader will be set to its default value. The on and off button is not available in Ableton Live. To move to another send, tap over the up and down triangles. Tap over the right and left triangles to go to the next track and set its sense levels. With Audio Swift, you can control the first eight cents of a track inside Ableton Live. Tap over the bottom right zone again to switch to the master fader view. This lets you control directly the master fader. Press the option key and it will move to zero dB. Tap one more time the right corner and you'll change to the jog wheel. With only one finger, start moving in circles around the center of the trackpad. If you are on session view, you'll change from scene to scene. Press the S key in your keyboard and it will start playing the selected scene. If you are on the arrangement view, using the jog wheel will move the cursor on the timeline. You can start moving your finger anywhere inside the middle area of the trackpad as long as the movements are in circles around the center. If you don't lift the finger, you can even go outside the middle area and it's still going to work. It's time to talk about the transport controls. In Audio Swift, there are several keyboard shortcuts that are used for transport control when the console is on or where the console is the key window on screen. You can either use them, or if you prefer, you can use the regular transport shortcuts in your DAW and then turn on the console for controlling the faders, panning, and so on. Like in your DAW, to play the music, use the space bar. Press it again and the playhead will play back from its original position. The letters from Q to Y in your keyboard are for the rest of transport controls. Q is for rewind, W is the stop button, E is another play button, the R is the record button, T is for enable the cycle mode, and Y is fast forward. If you have a MacBook Pro with touch bar, you will also see the transport controls displayed on it. It's good to mention that once you have configured the mixer mode in your DAW, both touch bar and keyboard transport controls are also accessible when you're working on the trigger, scale, and XY controller modes. With Audio Swift, you can automate the faders, panning, sense, and mute buttons. Hit the record button and start moving the fader. You can even automate two faders at the same time. That's all for this tutorial. Please watch the rest of videos on how to use Audio Swift in other controller modes. Thanks for watching.